Hello, my name is Dean Suzuki, and I'm a Senior Solution Architect with AWS. And today I want to talk about how you can have a fully managed application streaming service on AWS. So the first question people might have is, what is application streaming? And application streaming is really the ability to deliver applications securely over the internet. And the nice thing is that uh, the application and the data remains on the backend servers, in this case, hosted on AWS. And so your users, basically, they just get uh, the encrypted stream of pixels streamed down to their desktop. This simplifies the management of the application because if you need to upgrade to a new version, you just upgrade the, the version on the backend servers. The, you no longer have to, you know, if, there were, if, if it was deployed on each individual's user's workstations, you may have different ver uh, versions of the application running on different user's workstations. With app streaming, it's all running on the backend servers. So once you upgrade the backend server's application uh, on the server, everybody gets the latest version of that application. And the nice thing about it being fully managed is that AWS takes care of managing the backend uh, server resources to provide the app streaming. And you can scale it based upon your usage and you only pay for what you use. And how your users access the applications is that they access it through an HTML5 capable browser. And they can access this from a variety of platforms such as Windows, Linux, Macs, Chromebooks, iPads, and Android tablets. Basically anything with an HTML5 capable browser. And in addition, for Windows users, we also have a client app that they can run. So what are some of the use cases of this? Uh, so we see this, for example, in business applications, and it really simplifies the application delivery. For example, we had a customer where uh, they had uh, SAP and they needed to deploy SAP quickly to their users, and their users consisted of a mixed platform of PCs and Macs. So rather than having to build images for both types of platforms, they streamed the application through AppStream, and this simplified their deployment process. For 3D engineering and design, uh, you know, some of our customers uh, have 3D applications and these 3D applications require high-end back-end compute resources. So rather than providing each of their users with a high-end workstation, or in actually one of our customers' cases, their users were GIS uh, field workers, so uh, they needed to access these high-end workstations, but they're out in the field. Uh, so rather than providing them with high-end laptops, they streamed the application to their end users. Uh, and, you know, AWS provides a series of different uh, application streaming backend compute models. So they range from, you know, just a business application to uh, servers having higher end compute uh, GPU based cards to s enhance the graphics processing of those types of applications. Uh, the third category is, uh, that we see a lot of usages is, is in software vendors. Uh, a lot of times they have trials and demos that they want to provide their, their customers, potential customers. And rather than you know shipping out the software, they can actually stream that software over the internet to their users to try and, and, and demo out. And this simplifies the process that instead of having the users install the application on a trial workstation, they get users can just go to a browser and try out the application within the browser. And also educational institutions are using AppStream to really simplify the computer labs. Uh, you know, their students no longer have to go into the lab to access the application. For example, a lot of them have high-end, you know, compute intensive applications. Now they can uh, get those applications basically over the internet, streamed down to their desktop and all through a web browser. So these are some of the common use cases of AppStreaming. And how does AppStream work? Uh, actually, the service is called AppStream, and how it works is basically you install the applications the same way you would on any computer, and you install it on an image, and you build an image of the application. And you can integrate your existing identity network and storage solutions. Uh, for example, if you have Active Directory, you can integrate the user authentication piece with Active Directory. And once you do that, uh, you, you basically build the image and then AppStream can uh, basically stream that application out to their users and they can access it through a browser on any computer. So that's basically how AppStream works. Now let's go ahead and jump into a demo so you can see this in action. Okay, let's start with a demo here. And what you're seeing here is I'm logged into a browser and I published the AppStream through 
another service called Amazon SSO, Single Sign-On. And what that allows us to do is have this basically web-based portal. And I've integrated this portal with my Active Directory users. So I logged in with an AD user and I published the app stream here th to the, on the SSO portal. So when I click on that, uh, basically it pulls up this app stream interface. And on the app stream interface, I've actually published some applications here. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on this app here, which I published. And what you'll see is that I published basically the Putty app. And this is coming to me as a user through the browser. And so this is just showing you really easily how you could publish uh, even desk, this is in this case, a desktop app. And it's coming through just a browser-based interface like I mentioned earlier. So basically that's what AppStream allows you to do. You can publish applications and then allow your users to access those applications. And what's coming to me is basically an encrypted stream of just the pixels of the app, but the app is actually running on the backend server. Okay, so let's just jump back into the slides. Okay, so basically the process to use AppStream is that there's uh, four basic steps. First, you build your image and we provide a tool called Image Builder. And basically you, you use Image Builder to build an image and then you install your applications on that image. And once you have that image, then the next step is really to deploy your fleet. This is a set of servers, uh, basically instances that are running that application and you can configure it to auto scale up and down based upon your needs. And then, you do, and then you build a concept called a stack, which has some configuration of that application. And then you integrate the directory, you use the user directory. AppStream comes with its own uh, user directory called the user pool. But in, as you saw in my example, I've integrated with Active Directory. So just at a high level, you know, you build your image, then you build your, uh, basically you define and provision your fleet, which uses the image and you basically here pick the instance type of the fleet that you want to run, what kind of servers you want it to run on, and all the security and uh, associated parameters associated with instances. And then you configure the stack, which is a concept where basically you configure some of the options for the application. And then you provision the, the stack to the users. And this is where you integrate the directory piece. And as I mentioned, AppStream comes with its own user pool, or you can integrate it with Active Directory or any SAML directory. So how it looks like is something like this, where, and we'll just focus on this top piece where you have, uh, the AppStream is basically this service that we provide where it's a fleet of uh, instances that are running your application and uh, your users can access it through a streaming gateway where they're accessing it via the browser. And on the back end, it's integrated with, uh, it can be ha using the AppStream user pool, or in my case, what I did is I integrated with Active Directory. So I'm gonna go ahead now and flip back to the console and show you how this looks like in the AWS console. Okay, here I am in my AWS console and I'm in the AppStream service. And again, how you get here is basically you log into the console, go to services and type in AppStream or, and it'll bring you, or you know, it'll be down here as well. And it'll bring you to the AppStream service. And the first step you wanna do is basically uh, build an image. So we provide this tool called Image Builder, which you can use to build your image. In this case, I built my image here and there's a process you go through that you can go ahead and install the applications and test how it works. And uh, basically it gives you an iterative process really to install your apps and test how it'll work through the AppStream process. So you'll, uh, you'll know what it looks like. And then the, the next part is you build your fleet. And the fleet is basically the set of instances that will run your application. In this case, I, I, I've, I've built a fleet here. And one of the key parameters here is basically the fleet type. And there's two types, one's on demand and one's always on. So the on demand ones will fire up the instances based upon users accessing the application. So the first time someone accesses the app application, there is a startup time associated with it. Uh, typically it's about one to two minutes. Or you can make it always on, but if it's always on, you're paying for the usage on the back end compute instances. So it's a trade off there, uh, whether or not you wanna go always on demand or always on. And if you notice down here, uh, when I 
when you uh, define the fleet, you basically define your scaling policies. In this case, you know, I set a minimum capacity of one instance and a maximum of eight. And then you can define your scale out and your scale in uh, parameters as well. So in this case, I said if the capacity utilization is greater than 75%, then add two instances. Uh, if it's less than 25%, you can remove one instance. So you can dynamically scale the size of your fleet that's supporting, providing the AppStream service. And then the next piece is you define your stacks. And then here, you basically define the parameters of the application here. So I built my stack here. And then you integrate it with the directory. In my case, I integrated with uh, Amazon SSO. And I'll provide some links at the end of the video uh, showing how that integration works. So now I want to flip back to an interesting scenario that one of my customers brought up. I'm going to flip back to the slides. Okay, so the scenario that we have here is that our customer had a custom application that they updated on a weekly basis. And they were publishing this application via AppStream. And they also needed integration with Active Directory. Uh, and one of the things when you do the image builder process, it takes about an hour or so to really build a new image. So they're looking for a more agile way to update the app uh, given that they updated their application on a weekly basis. So one of the things we did here was we integrated AppStream with Windows, uh, Amazon FSX for Windows file servers. And what FSX for Windows file servers is, is basically Amazon's uh, managed Windows file servers. We're actually running Windows file servers and managing them for you. And what they did was uh, they copied the new version of the app to FSX and AppStream was looking at that FSX uh, file share for the new app. So it kind of looks like this process here. So what you have here in this diagram at the top here is you have F uh, the AppStream running here. And what we did on the AppStream is the, the image was actually pointing to uh, a file share. And on that file share, we posted the app. So on a weekly basis, what happened was the customer uploaded the new version of the app to the FSX file share. And when the users went when that new version was uh, loaded there, um, when the users access the app stream through the uh, streaming gateway, they would get the new version of the app. So let's go ahead and, and sh uh, show a demo of this. Okay, so here I'm back in my environment. Again, this is the app stream interface. And I'm going to go ahead and click the app again. And if you notice, it launches the Putty app. So basically what I've did in this configuration is that Putty is actually coming from a file share which uh, AppStream is looking at to publish this application. So I'm gonna go ahead into my Windows desktop client and you'll see here, this is the actual share that actually it's coming, AppStream is using to publish the app. So here's the name of the app. What I'm gonna do here is rename this, I'm gonna rename this to say dash old. And I'm gonna go ahead, that was Putty. I'm gonna go ahead, and this is, I'm gonna use this Calc app just to simulate the difference here. This is the calculator app. I'm gonna go ahead and name this app, copy it, and paste it. And I'm gonna rename this to be Demo App. So again, here, what, what AppStream is doing is looking for this application called Demo App on this share and using that to publish out to the user. So, and this share is run, again running on Windows uh, FSX for Windows file servers. So now I'm going to go back to my AppStream interface. I'm going to close this app down. I'm going to go back to the catalog. And you see it here. I'm going to go ahead and relaunch this. And now if you notice, it actually launches the calculator app. And I'm choosing the calculator app basically to simulate another app. So just think about it in my customer scenario case, let's say they wanted to update the version of their software from the old version to the new version. All they had to do is really upload it to that file share and notice almost instantly their users will get the new version of the app. So this really helps simplify and speed up the agility of them being able to deploy new versions of the application uh, through AppStream. So now that you have a, a good overview of AppStream, one of the things I really highly encourage you to do is, is take a look at this uh, portal here. Go to https slash aws.amazon.com slash AppStream2. And I pulled it up here on the screen. And this will take you to the AppStream portal. And uh, it gives you a good overview of AppStream, introductory video, some co uh, content here, some of the partners, uh, use case scenarios, 
And one of the things I want to highly point out here is uh, take a look at the blog. It has a lot of interesting information to learn more about AppStream. And also down here, there's actually a getting started guide. So one of the things I highly encourage you to do is take a look at this getting started guide. And when you come here, it will actually walk through how to set up AppStream in 10 simple steps. So this is a good way to get hands-on experience with AppStream and get going. And with that, I wanted to thank you for joining and watching this webcast. Take care. Thank you.